Okay, good question I got this week in my Ask Mark inbox is, Mark, I've seen a lot of people go from high power solid state units with inefficient speakers to then high power push pulls and electrostatic. Then ultimately they kind of switch to SET uh, single ended triode and very efficient speakers. Why do they sound so good? Where to start regarding SET and efficient speakers? Cheers. And this was from Sergio. And I'll take my best shot at this one. Um, <clears throat> typically a single ended triode amplifier is an amplifier designed around um, a single ended triode tube, vacuum tube. Most commonly type 45s, type 2A3s, 300Bs, sometimes 211. Um, those are typically directly heated cathode tubes um, of an older vintage, uh, probably made before the 1950s or 60s. And there's a lot of those tubes around. They were used in a lot of older gear, and um, you still see a lot of people building amps based on those tubes today. You also see some single-ended triodes that... Um, Maybe they're not triodes, but they're being ran in a triode mode. In other words, they've strapped the uh, pentode mode of their tube. So you see some KT88s, 807, other 6L6 amplifiers being ran in a single ended triode mode. Um, most of these amplifiers, um, because of the single ended nature, single ended is also another term for that, would be a class A amplifier. And because of that, they run at what is called a 100% full duty cycle. So in other words, that tube is turned on and amplifying 100% of the time. And it's just waiting on the input signal to come into it. And it's amplifying that signal and putting it on the output. And because of that, um, these amplifiers typically run anywhere from about 2 watts to 10 watts in power output. So you're not going to find a single-ended triode amplifier that is a 200-watt amp. Um, or if you do, it's something special. Somebody's par paralleled a bunch of single-ended triodes together um, to try to make something. Or they've used some really monstrous tubes, maybe like uh, 211s or 845s. But even a good 211 in single-ended triode, you might get a 15 watts out of that uh, tube uh, effectively. So. Um, Anyway, so you've got this low wattage scenario, but you had a very pure amplifier, and so you need to pair that with some fairly efficient speakers. And when I say fairly efficient, I mean 95 dPe per watt per meter um, speakers or better, so 95 dB. And typically you find those in speakers like horn-loaded speakers, the old uh, Western Electric or maybe Altex. Um, or um, some more modern clip speakers, um, or you see them in, sometimes in the form of a single driver, sometimes called a full range speaker. So you have this single driver that can cover the full audio spectrum all the way down to maybe 50 or 60 hertz, all the way up through the top end, maybe 20 kilohertz or whatnot. And so there's no crossover involved, just a very efficient speaker. Um, I've got a uh, pair of speakers built with Fostex drivers, and these Fostex are uh, pretty good full range speakers. Um, so coming back around to the amplifier itself, once you've got a nice set of uh, kind of efficient speakers, you may wonder, well, well, well why do these things sound so good? Okay, I'm going to sum up the, the reasons why in three statements here. First off, Single-ended designs are a simpler design. You have less components. In a push-pull amplifier, you end up with a phase inverter in there. Um, just a more complex circuit overall. You end up with two output tubes versus one. Um, you got to keep phasing right in between the, uh, the various stages of the amplifier. And, um, and ultimately, uh, single-ended is a has less components, thus less things to color the sound. So it's a more pure amplifier. It's the most simple and basic in nature. And um, I think there's magic in that statement. Up next, you kind of got um, class AB, which is push-pull. Well, you're taking, a, you're taking the audio signal and you're splitting it in half. So you see this sine wave up here on the top. In a class A amplifier, it amplifies every bit of this signal, both both the positive peaks and the negative peaks of this signal. 
and kind of spits it through the amplifier and sends it out the other side as a larger signal. In a Class AB amplifier, you split the signal in half in your amplifier and you send the positive peaks to one set of tubes in your output or an output tube and you send the negative peaks here to another tube in your output. So each of those tubes then is running as what, at what is considered 50% duty cycle. So you can drive these things harder and you can get more power out of them because they're not turned on 100% of the time. The problem is when you break this signal apart and then amplify it, you've got to put it back together at some point uh, to send to the speaker. And if not done properly, and this is a little bit of an exaggerated picture down here, but you can see where you're stitching these things back together and you see the circle, it's not always perfect. And so you end up here with this, uh, what we would call crossover distortion. Um, and you can see a picture here on an oscilloscope of what this actually looks like um, when you have crossover distortion going on. And it's hard to get rid of that 100%. So you end up with that kind of uh, taining the tone of your sound just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to jump off the auto foolery diving board right into the deep end on this next statement. Um, I believe there's some magic about a single-ended amplifier. Um, I've listened to enough of them, I've owned enough of them, I've built several of them, and there's just something magical about them. If you get them paired with the right set of very efficient speakers, there's something that comes to life um, that's just kind of hard to explain. Your music uh, seems fuller. Um, the the in-between notes, the black, the darkness, or, or the uh, silence between notes just seems dark. Almost like there is nothing in between the notes. Um, you know, it just kind of grabs you in a way that um, you can kind of feel it in your gut as much as you can hear it. And I think, you know, I could say that that's a result of number one, the simpler design with less components. I could say it's number two, the, the uh, potential crossover distortion and just the extra components in a push-pull unit. But I think it's more about the synergy of the system uh, as a whole. Um, you know, I've had people before say to me, hey, I listened to this amp at your house and it sounded amazing. And then I took it home to my house and it didn't sound quite so good. And then I would say, well, what speakers are you running with it? And they would say, well, I've got this and this and this. And I said, well, well here, come to the house and borrow these speakers and take them home. And they'll take those speakers home, they'll put them in their room. And they're like, wow, the speakers made a world of difference. And they say, well, are these speakers better than the ones I had? I said, no, they're really not. They just kind of match up better. And there's a tighter synergy between these speakers and the, uh, and the amplifier you've got there. Maybe those other speakers you have work better with a different amp. Um, so sometimes you just find this magical pairing, and I seem to find that maybe easier or more frequently with single-ended devices. So I know I'm way out in subjective land right now, but I'm, I'm trying to explain this the best I can. Trust me, if there was science behind it, there would not be the huge debates that exist today. Um, so take it for what it's worth, and uh, kind of we can kind of go from there. Thanks for watching, everybody.